Greetings everyone, so today I just want to give you a little update. I finally got my Mac Studio in and it's a process. I've unboxed it, I've connected it. I just want to talk about some things that I'm actually doing to get it set up. It's a process, like I said. If you have a new system, it's okay. But if you have a system that's already in place and you're trying to get it to be mirrored to this new system that I have in place, then it's a lot of work. I got files that I want to transfer I want to actually set it up with all my preferences, like in Final Cut, for instance, you know, all my plugins that I've installed and all that stuff. I got to go to the process. And then in order to install some software, I have to deregister the software that's running on the current machine and re-register it on the newer machine because it only allowed me to register it on one device at a time. During that process, I have to still keep the current system up and running, install the software on the newer system and just make sure it's in place. And then when I get everything in place, what I'm gonna do is deactivate that system and then activate all the software that I have on the newer system. So I have to actually live in both worlds right now. So I'm going through the process right now of doing that transfer which is kind of like slowing down the video making process because I have to make sure that I don't edit the videos on the older system because the stuff is on the newer system, if you know what I mean. It's, it's, it's a process, but I'm going through it and I should have this whole thing up and running by next week, hopefully. But in the meantime, I'm going to try to make these little videos in between and I still have my MacBook so I can edit the videos on the MacBook instead of trying to edit it on the system. But I'm excited and I can't wait to start editing the videos on the new Mac Studio. Now I'm showing you some behind the scenes of what's going on right now as far as setting it up. I have the two systems hook up to one keyboard and one mouse and I'm going to show you how I switch them back and forth. I have a little box that I've made a video on back in the past on how you can connect two system to one keyboard. Now there's softwares that can do that too, but the hardware part of it makes it a whole lot more convenient and it works much better than trying to use the software version of it. And I got a video explaining that coming up soon. Also, I use the video switcher, the HDMI switcher that I made a video on also to switch from one feed to the next. But I'm actually just using one screen now just for the Mac Studio then when I get everything in place, then I'll have it set up to where I can switch different screens. So like I said, it's a work in progress, but it's coming along. The hardest part now is like I say, getting the files off the old system to the new system. But some of the files, I'm just gonna go ahead and put on the server instead of transferring it to the Mac Studio because I probably won't need those files right now. Old archive videos that I've made, I can just go ahead and store them on the studio if I need them later. But those videos already been done they already been uploaded to YouTube, and if I need to re-upload them, at least they'll be stored on the server if I need them in the future. So I have a detailed video coming out that I'll be doing, showing you how I set up the new Mac Studio, and you know the different gadgets I'm using to set it up, so where I can have these dual systems. Because in the end, it'll be the Mac Studio and the Windows 11 machine because I need both. I need both for the stuff that I do. Each one has their own strength and weaknesses. And unfortunately, I live in that world. So I need both system in place. But I need to get the Mac Studio up and running before I even start messing with the Windows 11 machine. Now I do have an older system that I'm using to run Windows 11, but I wanna set up my Hackintosh as the Windows 11 machine because it has more power, more memory, and it can do a whole lot more than my older Windows machine. But the goal first is to get the Mac Studio up and running. And I've actually started the setup procedure. Most of the software that I need is already installed, at least maybe 80%. I got a couple more I have to install, but it's getting there. And then everything is hardwired using the ethernet, so I'm transferring the data as quick as possible. But I got to sort out what's going there and what's going to the server. And you know, years of years of collecting data you know, you realize, wow, I got a lot. It's like moving from a house. When you're in your house, you're not counting the plates and the cups and the dishes and the, the chairs and everything else that you have in your house. But when it comes time to move, 
then you realize I got a lot of stuff. So that's what I'm going through. Most of my data is useful data because I do make a lot of videos. I got a lot of music. I got a lot of pictures. I got a lot of stuff. So that's not a problem. And that's the reason why I'm trying to steer in the server direction for the future. I want to store everything on the server and stop storing it on the computer because it takes a lot just to move it from one to the next. And I know that in the future, I'm going to keep on upgrading. Now, I'm going to keep this Mac Studio for a long time, so I won't be upgrading for a while. But it will come a time when I have to do that upgrade. And I really need to start storing about 80% of that data on the server. That way, I can have an easy transition when I get a new system in the distant future. The server is automatically backing up in the cloud. So that's where I really need to have the data, to be honest with you. My computer is not set up for the backup procedure, which I could, but the server is automatically backing up data in the cloud. So since I'm making this transition from one system to the next, I said to myself, why not do it right? Why not make it easy for yourself in the future as far as transferring an upgrading system in the distant future? So that's the latest update. I still have a lot of videos that I got coming out. I've been having a lot of products coming in. And I started doing, you know, footage from those videos, just trying to gather them up. I just need to do the vocal part of it. I have a video that's coming out probably by this weekend that's going to talk about the technology that's built into your phone, the sensors, I should say, that makes your phone smart. Because your phone is smart, but nobody really knows why it's smart. Well, I'm going to cover some things that explain the reason why you have a smartphone. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Okay, so that's the update I wanted to give you. And I want to thank all my special subscribers that always come back and watch my videos. Thank you for taking your time watching these videos, leaving comments, likes, all that stuff. I do appreciate you. So have a good one until I see you next time.